Hey, fellow YouTubers, Roller Martin here. Listen, I'm going to show you a thing or two about trying to flip up a big bass on a jig. That's my big old flipping jig, big old 65 pound test braid, big old frogging and flipping rod by, by favorite. And I'm going to try to, on this half ounce jig, I'm going to try to get a big fish. We're in some big heavy cover right now. It's, uh, it's the full moon of February, so there could be a couple big bass moving into this heavy cover, kind of looking around to spawn. But I got some heavy tackle and I'm trying for some big fish. So let, let me show you what I'm doing. I'm going to be pitching and flipping the whole time. Okay, right now, I mean, it's, I'm a little close, but I'm, 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 look at that. I can go in places like that and flip. So I'll, I'll, get, I'll, get, I'll get up a little bit away from these weeds, and I'm going to go back in the weeds. That's the whole trick about a lot of, a lot of times these bass in these, in these heavy cover situations. That's why you need a big flipping stick. That's why you need big, heavy braided line like we have, and that's why... Uh, that's why a lot of people don't get the fish, because these bigger fish, see it's deep here. I want to just show you something. Look at this. Look how deep it is. Oh, it's that deep right there, four or five feet deep right here at the weeds. So I'm going to flip right into them. Okay, I'm right in the middle of them. Notice I have a big ug button there. I'm going to just slowly pick up. And I'm, I'm a line watcher. I like to watch the line. And I'm also uh, feeling for stuff. And I'm going to jig it four, five, or six times. And then I'm going to pull it out, take the jig, and drop it back in again, just real quiet. Now, see what I'm trying to do? The fish is laying there. And I don't want to, I don't want to spook them. So I'm being real quiet about it. Just real quiet. I'm just easing along. I'm throwing right back in there, pitching again. Dropping it down, watching, notching that line. Watching that line. Okay. But look at back in there where I'm going to flip. I'm going to pitch all back in, the, in, these, in these bad, bad, bad places. Right back in there. Still three and four and five feet deep. Way back in there. That's why you need a big rod, big heavy line. I had one hit it. I don't know what it was. He hit it. Just a little bitty tick. I got him, got him. <laughs> that's, that's going right back in the same spot. That's not a really big fish, but I tell you what could be there. Now this is just a small one, but what about the big spawner fish? I'm going to let him go over here because maybe, just maybe, I'm going to hit my power pole. I'm going to go down with my power pole. i got a power pole here. Going right down with it. I'll put my power pole down. And I'm going to go right here and see if I can't get another one to bite right there. Because maybe the big female's in there. That was a cool deal. I'm a little close, but hey, I don't know where the female is. Why is it doing operation on this trolling motor to get it to work? To get it to work. We got one. Ah, son. That's what we're talking about. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Yes, sir. Big old bass. And with this heavy duty line, you can lift them right in the boat. Yes, sir. Just like that. <laughs> now, that's what we're talking about. Big old jig fish. This isn't bad. But I saw that line moving. It was funny because I, I threw into the, into the shore, or close to the shore, and, uh, and the line just started moving out. And that's, that's the telltale sign. Being a line watcher, that's a big deal. Little one. Hey, you got to weed through a, a lot of small ones. That's that's just part of flipping and pitching. You're after big fish, true. 
but you got to weed through the little ones. And every once in a while, now like on Lake Okeechobee, for example, the biggest fish that are caught for the most part are caught flipping uh, jigs like this in the big heavy reed patches and lily pad areas. Uh, we're not on Okeechobee now. We're just in a private little pond. And uh, same kind of deal. Just look for the heaviest cover, look for the little patches of, of lilies. Now see out here, see the little, little lily pads in some of those places. You know, I go around the lake on this and, and, when, and when you flip, you just have to be an opportunist. You don't know whether you're gonna come on a log or a bush or a little patch of lily pads, but heavy cover in general is, is what really holds the big fish. You know, bass seek an ambush point. And the reason why they seek an ambush point is it, oh no, I thought I did, I didn't. They, they don't, there are a couple reasons. One, and the sun's out now, Bass don't have eyelids. I mean, they can't, they can't just close their eyes. So the, the first consideration is that they're in, in the shade of, of that little patch of lilies or that little, here's a little patch right here. And so that could be part of the reason. And then the other part of the reason is bass are like, like a cat, they're, they're a predator. And they seek an ambush point like a cat would be laying in a lair, uh, you know, uh, trying, to, trying to get a mouse or something like that. They're laying behind something and kind of in, a, in an ambush point. And that's being a predator that the bass are. They're laying there in the shade out of the sun where their eyes are shaded. And as a, as a predator, just getting ready to jump on something. So they need, they need cover to, to catch them. I mean, you're, they swim around. And the problem when there's no cover in the lake and they're just swimming around, they don't, oh, they don't have a little, they don't have that, that predator instinct and they're not attacking stuff because they're just swimming around. They're not, they're not, not on an ambush point. So it's harder to catch fish. Well, I don't know the strike. It's harder to catch fish when they're just roaming around like that. I don't have a little fish. I can't catch them. There's another log right along here, but I don't know exactly where it is, right along here. I always catch one right here. Yeah, that may be him. That's maybe the maybe the log fish. Yes, sir. That's what we're talking about, folks. That's a good one. Flipping the logs, flipping the grass. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lift him in. I'm just gonna grab him. Nice big old five pounder. <clears throat> nice good fish. <laughs> now we're talking. Now we're talking folks. This is what it's all about. Big old log fish. Ah! Now, I don't know how big that is. I'm gonna call it five pounds. If you get real big, I'll start weighing them. But for right now, that's a good fish. Real big one. Okay, get my jig. Oh, jig catches big fish. I'm telling you what, son. Be a line watcher. That was a good one. That was a good one. I'm throwing right to the edge of that grass, but see, it, it's deep here. I mean, like I say, it's... It's way deep right there. Beautiful bass, beautiful flipping deal. That's what we want. Big fish like that. Flipping a jig. But you notice how I'm holding the rod. That's important because I'm holding the rod a certain way to get a really good hook set. And I like longer handles and I like these big old Ugg stick things because they they're good. Now I notice another thing almost always when you when you get a strike on the shoreline like this they'll ease out to deeper water. In other words that fish that last fish I had you know it was in like this and all of a sudden when I picked up on the line I saw the line coming out like that. I didn't feel anything. I felt nothing but I saw the line moving out 
And that's usually what happens. They usually move out, kind of head out towards deep water when they have a mouthful of food. And another reason why they move like that is sometimes there's more than one fish there. So that's a big deal. Big one, big one. Oh yeah, look at that big Big giant bass. Oh yeah, that's what we're talking about. Right in the reeds. That's what we're talking about, folks. That's a big fish. I'm gonna have to weigh him. That's a big old bass. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. That's what flipping's all about. Big giant fish like this one. Okay. Okay, folks. That's a bass. That's a bass and a half. That's a bass and three quarters. That's a bass, son. That's what it's all about. In fact, I'm going to stop. I'm going to weigh it first. And then I'm going to take some, some uh, pictures for uh, fish brain. Let me get it around here and get out to where I can wear, weigh my fish. And now take the scale and come like this and weigh it. And it weighs seven point three seven three six it weighs seven seven three six okay that's a good one okay folks i don't know if i'm going to catch a bigger fish than this today this is really a big fish it's almost eight pounds and they have a lunker bass uh, catch program here in florida when you catch these fish uh well just a little teeny bit bigger than this this is uh, not quite eight pounds almost eight pounds then you get a citation and you get $100 worth of gift certificates from Bass Pro Shop as, as a, in addition to, to other, other little prizes and tokens and awards. Okay, I'm going to let this one go to be caught again another day, son. Big old giant bass. Woo! That's what it's all about. That was, that was some sweet stuff. Well, I've caught two or three big fish today. I don't know how many more I can catch, but I'm going to try a little bit more. Okay, folks. My old jig. Check my line. Now, I've also taken a black magic marker. Another little trick I use is I've taken a black magic marker and I've, I've, I've darkened about a foot of that line right there. And we've found over the years that the black is the more invisible on this braid, so it really helps. It's kind of dark water. I'm gonna flip right into those edge of those lilies right there and see what happens. Drop it down. Okay. thing down along the weed line a little bit not a real big one but it's a fish I'll tell you I did, I did a little deep part I just sw swam it down the weed line let's see what happens Good one, big one. <laughs> I love it. Yes, sir. We're off at a little willow kind of deal. I'll tell you what, folks. We've caught some big fish today on jigs. Nice big one, too. Uh, not as big as that big almost eight pounder, but it's a decent fish. So, <laughs> the old jig trick. Well, I'll tell you, I've shown you a few things about jig fishing today. Pretty good, son. I'll let this thing go. Beautiful bass. Well, I've shown you a few things about jig fishing. Been a pretty good day. Uh. 
Maybe that swimming deal would work. Oh, yeah. That swimming it long, kind of like this. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> We're talking about a big one. Another big one. Son. Son. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you, I was showing you some neat stuff today, boys. Some good big old bass. Nice big giant fish like this one. Ah, yes, sir. Let me turn around. Well, the flipping really worked, but on some of this heavy cover, like I just did then, swimming it, the, swimming it along isn't a bad deal. Well, you know, we've had some three, four, and five pound fish, even a seven something pound fish. So what a day on the jig. A jig is a big bass bait. So the next time you're anywhere, Connecticut to California, and you want to catch a big fish, hey, I recommend a jig. Sometimes you don't catch as many as a worm, but I'll tell you, your average is bigger and better. You tubing it, son. Listen, I, I appreciate you subscribing to my channel. Fishing, well, Roland Martin Outdoors is my channel, and uh, I'm really kind of getting somewhere. My son Scott's helping me out a lot. And uh, I'm just having a ball doing these films. So, so be sure to subscribe. And also, we're posting every Wednesday and every Sunday. So two times a week, we're posting good how-to videos, Wednesdays and Sundays. We'll see you soon.